When a leader falls, the reverberations can shake the faith of a community to its core. As I reflect on some of the most startling pastor scandals that jarred many of us out of disbelief. Let's take a look at the 10 top pastor scandals the American church will never forget, progressing to the most shocking one at the end. Reverend O. Germain Simmons. Reverend O. Germain Simmons, a much respected pastor at Jacob Chapel Baptist Church, is found in a compromising position with a married congregant right in her home. It sounds like something out of a dramatic movie, but this was no fiction. It happened on January 17, 2017. A report from the Tallahassee Police Department acquired by the Christian Post said Simmons, 37, was caught in bed with Clanisha Stevens, 34, by the woman's husband, Benjamin Stevens III. Both Clanisha and Benjamin are his parishioners. Clanisha, who has been married for seven years, told police that she first met Simmons in 2014, but they have been establishing a relationship as of October 2016. On January 17th, she said, Simmons came over to the home she shares with her husband and their children so they could talk over starting a business, patents and trademarks, and providing less fortunate kids with clothes and shoes. During the meeting, she said, they started having sex. While they were engaged, her six-year-old son's school was trying to get in touch with her to pick him up. Since she did not answer, the school reached out to the boy's father. Benjamin picked up their son and headed home only to discover his wife engaged with Simmons in their oldest daughter's bedroom. Benjamin reportedly screamed, I'm gonna unalive him, and went to the couple's bedroom to retrieve a small handgun. On hearing the threat, the frightened pastor fled the couple's home naked without waiting to see what would happen. Simmons ran out of the apartment naked and hopped a privacy fence behind some shrubs, the report said, but his car keys and his clothes were inside the house with the woman and her enraged husband. A parishioner gave the pastor a ride from the apartment and police later helped him retrieve his clothes and car. The woman's husband, Benjamin, was slapped with aggravated assault charges. Meanwhile, Simmons found himself facing his congregation. His guilt lay bare. With a heartfelt apology, he asked for forgiveness, an appeal that was met with a standing ovation. A few days after he was caught, the Reverend O. Germain Simmons Sr. told his parishioners that he would not resign because God had already forgiven him and his wife stood by him. I am hurting because I've hurt you. I'm talking to Jacob Chow. Can't speak for people on the outside because I'm not, I'm not Tallahassee's pastor. Yeah. I'm not Florida's pastor. I'm not the Lord's pastor. Okay. It hurts me that you have to defend my actions because when you love somebody, you you. You want to fight for them. You, you want to defend them. But let me be very clear. You cannot defend sin. I want to make something clear. Because God is pushing me forward. I'll never be sorry enough for some people. Even now when you critique, what did he mean? I, I, I don't have the energy for that right now. But I have to be clear that God is pushing us forward. Pushing us. And so you will be attacked for loving me. There may be some folk here today in this room who came to see what was going to happen. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Amen. What is he going to say? Right. 
if I stop preaching, if I stop doing what the Lord called me to do over this, it presupposes that I was qualified to do it in the first place. Does that make sense? And if I if I quit, if I walk away over this. It presupposes that I deserved to preach last Sunday when there was no sin. I was a wretch unknown when he called me. I'm a work in progress now. But with the Lord on our side. We will be. Many non-members of the church were shocked, demanding that he should step down. A comment on the video says, I find it sad and shocking that the guilty party is the one who chooses to move forward. Isn't that convenient? You need to move forward into the latter part of your life. Aside from pastoring, that's why the church continues to be ridiculed by the world and God's name is shamed. Did God tell you to move forward? If so, I'm impressed at your ability to hear from God after the sin but you didn't hear from God before the sin. Hashtag step down for Christ's sake. Still about pastors sleeping with their married members, we zoom to senior pastor Chris Hill. This is Chris Hill, a spiritual son of T.D. Jakes. He is also the senior pastor of the Potter's House Church of Denver, which is a branch of the Potter's House Church. In this picture, Pastor Chris Hill poses with his goddaughter and employee, Shernay, and her husband, Arthur McFarlane III, on their wedding day, September 26, 2014. Here is Pastor Hill's wife also posing with Shernay on the wedding day, as reported by the Christian Post. In 2017, Joy Hill sent a mass text message to church members alleging that her husband has been engaged in a months-long affair with a married parishioner who also happens to be their goddaughter, Sharnay. Joy Hill stated that with the help of a private investigator who followed them for weeks, she was able to confirm that they had been having an affair for several months. Here is a portion of the mass text message sent out by First Lady Hill. For your information, Pastor called the police on me tonight because I yelled at him asking him to leave the house tonight and he wouldn't. I was upset because he won't stop having an affair with Sharnay and I can't live like this anymore. They've been having an affair for several months, and he finally admitted it yesterday after I hired a private investigator to have them followed over the past six weeks. So since he wouldn't leave the house tonight, I threw his clothes in our dry, empty hot tub. I'm done covering for him, done. I called one of our deacons, Officer Everett Moore, and he came over tonight too. Four cops in total were at our home. They concluded that no crime was committed. He's painting me to be violent and irrational. I am neither. I am a wife who is devastated that her husband is cheating her with her daughter. And to make matters worse, Shernay falsely accused me of keying her car yesterday. And my husband believes her and told her to press charges against me. My grace for this is over. I want a husband that won't cheat on me or verbally and emotionally abuse me. Shernay is your new first lady now, I won't be coming to the Porter's House, Denver anymore. Following this revelation of their senior pastor's alleged affair with a married parishioner, the Potter's House Church of Denver announced that Chris Hill, a protege of megachurch preacher Bishop T.D. Jakes, has resigned from his position. Following the outburst of the allegations, Shernay and her husband also separated. But just three months after resigning as senior pastor of the Potter's House Church of Denver, over the alleged affair with a married parishioner, Pastor Chris Hill said he is ready to come back. And Bishop T.D. Jakes of Potter's House of Dallas laid hands on him and declared restoration. This is a good example of the fact that it is not ideal for pastors to have female office assistants. In the end, these pastors cheat, divorce, get new churches, remarry, and rather than taking responsibility, think they can start over with no responsibility.
When intimate photos leaked by an ex-girlfriend surfaced, gospel singer and pastor Dietrich Haddon faced public scrutiny. But that was not all. He got his current wife, Dominique Haddon, pregnant while still married to his ex, Demita Haddon. Dominique and Dietrich married months after Dietrich announced his split from his ex-wife of more than 15 years, who was also a gospel singer, Demita Haddon. The latter years of their marriage were tainted by rumors of infidelity on both ends. But Haddon wants everyone to know he's only human. It's all about truth to me from this point on. The truth about my baby out of wedlock, the truth about my divorce, it happened. There's nothing I can do about that. No. I'm a pastor, but at the end of the day, I'm a man. You know, nobody's perfect out there. You, everybody make mistakes. I've made my mistakes in my life. And no, I don't think there's anybody on the other side of this camera that have not made a mistake. The only difference is us being in the spotlight and we're, we're preachers and we hold to a different standard. And uh, sometimes we fall short just being human. You, you fall short. But the only thing you can do is just keep moving. You know what I mean, and keep going, you know. Plus, I got tough skin. For over a decade, there have been allegations of drug use and inappropriate sexual behavior against Ted Haggard, a pastor of New Life Church in Colorado Springs. Starting in the basement of his house with 22 people, that church eventually became New Life Church, one of the largest mega churches in America. With a congregation of over 14,000, Haggard became so influential that he visited the White House of President George W. Bush multiple times. He also served as president of the National Association of Evangelicals from 2003-2006. We've decided the Bible is the word of God. We don't have to have a general assembly about what we believe. It's written in the Bible. All right, so we don't have to debate about what we should think about homosexual activity. It's written in the Bible. I think I know what you did last night. <laughs> if you send me a thousand dollars, I won't tell your wife. <laughs> If you use any of this, I'll sue you. In 2006, there was a significant shift in the life of Ted Haggard when a gay prostitute came forward claiming that Haggard had paid him for sex. This revelation ultimately led to the decline of Haggard's career, resulting in him losing his position at New Life and having to move to Arizona. There, he began a new job selling insurance. In 2009, Haggard admitted to a second relationship with a male church member on CNN TV. In 2010, Haggard founded a new church called St. James Church. His wife, Gail, who has stood by him throughout his troubles, is the church co-pastor. In an interview from his home in Colorado Springs, he said, I feel we have moved past the scandal. We have forgiveness. It is a second chance. In 2022, 66-year-old Haggard again faced accusations of using methamphetamine and behaving inappropriately with young men at St. James Church in Colorado Springs, Colorado. The latest accusations were made by Kirk Seth Sethman, who became a minister at St. James Church in 2012. Sethman recorded the statements of two young men who claimed Haggard touched them inappropriately multiple times at the church. One of them was underage, when the inappropriate behavior began in 2019. Sethman brought the allegations to church elders in 2020. St. James Church has seen a decline in membership and recently sold its building. Haggard remains the head pastor, but has moved the church's services and study sessions to his home and now calls his new congregation the Storyhouse Church. In North Carolina, Renowned Baptist minister Coy Prevett faced charges in 2007 for aiding and abetting prostitution. Coy Prevett was charged with six counts of aiding and abetting prostitution by the State Bureau of Investigation and the Canopolis Police Department in 2007. At the time, Prevett was 74 years old, serving as the Cabarrus County Commissioner and a former NC State representative. Many were shocked that a respected minister with such a long-standing career would be involved in something so morally reprehensible. The investigation uncovered that Prevet had been paying prostitutes for sexual services since the early 1990s. He used his position of power and influence 
to coerce vulnerable women into prostitution and then paid them with church funds. Despite the overwhelming evidence against him, Prevet maintained his innocence and refused to resign from his political positions. He even continued to preach at his church, claiming that he was being targeted by the media and law enforcement due to his conservative beliefs. Later that year, Prevet eventually pleaded guilty to six counts of aiding and abetting prostitution. He was sentenced to one year of probation and 100 hours of community service, as well as a $1,000 fine. He was also required to seek counseling and attend a moral behavior course. The following year, Joe Barron, a pastor at Prestonwood Baptist Church in Texas, was arrested for um, allegedly soliciting a minor. Joe Barron served as a marriage counseling pastor and was one of the 40 ministers at Prestonwood Baptist Church in Plano, Texas. In 2008, Barron faced legal consequences for solicitation of a minor. It was discovered that he had driven from Dallas to Bryan, Texas, under the impression that he was meeting a 13-year-old girl, unaware that it was an undercover law enforcement official. Condoms, a webcam, and a headset were found in Barron's car at the time of his arrest. FBI agents raided the Tony Alamo Christian Ministries headquarters in September 2008 in connection with their investigation into child pornography. This action was taken after the mayor of Fook, Arkansas, received complaints from former members of the ministry regarding allegations of child abuse, sexual abuse, and polygamy. Tony Alamo, leader of the Tony Alamo Christian Ministries, was convicted in 2009 on multiple counts of transporting young girls and boys across state lines for sexual activities and pornography. He was subsequently sentenced to 175 years in prison on November 13, 2009. George Allen Wreckers, a far-right Christian leader known for his anti-homosexual beliefs, was caught with a male escort at Miami International Airport in 2010. George Allen Wreckers was photographed at Miami International Airport returning from an international trip with a 20-year-old gay male prostitute known as Rent Boy. Given Reeker's strong, strong anti-gay stance, his decision to hire a homosexual escort as a travel companion caused a scandal. Initially, Reekers claimed the escort was there to help with luggage, but later stated on Facebook that he spent time with sinners to help them. The escort later claimed in interviews that Reekers had paid him for daily nude massages, including genital touching. The incident raised questions about the hypocrisy of public figures. Bishop Eddie Long faced accusations of inappropriate sexual relationships with young men. Despite these serious allegations, Long held onto his leadership position in the New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. Four young men have accused him of sexual exploitation, but he remains defiant, refusing to vacate his esteemed position. One of them, Spencer Legrand, speaks up about a trip to Kenya in 2005 with chilling details of coercion into sexual acts. Bishop Eddie Long maintained his innocence against the allegations, but settled out of court, leaving the community divided and sparking broader discussions about power dynamics and spiritual mentorship in religious settings. The late Earl Polk, who founded the Chapel Hill Harvester Church in Decatur, Georgia, was embroiled in multiple scandals involving sexual relations with women from his congregation. These scandals spanned several years. Numerous women from his congregation came forward claiming to have had sexual relations with him, and many of these claims were found to be true. The most shocking scandal involved his nephew, Donnie Earl Polk, who was revealed through DNA testing to be Earl's son, not his nephew. This confirmed that Earl had a sexual relationship with his sister-in-law, Earl Polk is known to have been a longtime mentor of Bishop Eddie Long. These incidents have not only caused significant distress for the individuals involved, their families and their congregations, but also tarnished the reputation of the Christian church. This is a hard pill to swallow, especially for those of us who have entrusted our spiritual well-being to their hands. But remember, 
for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Our condemnation should not overshadow our capacity for compassion. With our sympathy, there must also come a stern call for accountability. Leaders within the church must be held to higher standards. They are the representatives of the word of God and they must strive to uphold its teachings. Transparency must be the foundation upon which trust is rebuilt. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.